The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. <clears throat> okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Sounded good, sounding bad, Lewis. It's just the allergies, folks. Uh, <laughs> and believe me, boy, they hit me really bad yesterday. It got so bad, is my doctor told me to go up to Mount Lemmon for the day, and I'm still here. I'm up at uh, 9,500 feet overlooking the beautiful Sonoran Desert in a coffee shop and I'm going to be heading back down the hill today here just after the show a little bit but uh, it's helped quite a bit but I got hit really bad yesterday why I don't know but uh, I'm doing much better today other than my voice being a little bit rasp raspy and I, the first chart that I posted is from our friend Jeff over there in New Jersey and you'll notice here he's looking at this pattern as a 135 pattern and I have to give Jeff an A plus on that you can see you're trading with the trend selling lower tops and that's exactly what the 135 pattern is all about. We covered this one on the day trading session on May the 17th and had, a, I think, two nice trades out of that 135 pattern. So that's it. Now, we have some really uh, uh, a really great guest today, as always. Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights will be our guest. He's always a lot of fun, and I, I think we're going to enjoy him very much as we usually do. But let me go over a few trades that we were looking at. Most of you that belong to the 24-7 or even listen to me on the newsletter here or on the show here today, uh, you know, we've been quite uh, uh, waiting for this level to be hit in the, uh, the gold market. Let's just get this up here so we'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see here what we live and die by, which is nothing more than, <clears throat> uh, where are you? Uh-oh, don't tell me that. Trouble in River City already? Oh, dear. Let me try it again, boys and girls. Something's not right in River City. Let's get it up here and see if we can finally get it running. Uh, maybe this will do it. I think it will. There we go. There, There's what you got, folks. You can see two uh, beautiful ABCD patterns up there at uh, 1968. The high was 1969. It's broken about $20. And that's got a potential to get down into this area here, folks, down into the <coughs> 920. <clears throat> excuse me 920 areas but no matter what on this you you lock in at least a $700 profit on this on the gold for sure because you don't want if you if you're up two grand something folks you don't want to risk the whole two grand you know that's not necessary to do that <laughs> we all know that for a fact all right the next one we've been watching of course here is, is the euro now these are ones I talk on the show here folks uh, I did this on Monday of course and uh, you'll notice here, uh, this is the beautiful 61% retracement here. Again, looking at ABCDs, we've broken well over 100 pips down from the high here again. This is a place where if you made 1,200, you're not going to give all of it back. You maybe give half of it back, but don't give all of it back. That's not uh, that's not very uh, that's not very smart trading in my opinion. So let's uh, move on to the next one. Okay, I, w I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the young man that made that hundred grand and then followed it up the next day. Believe it or not, with another uh, seventeen thousand. And then yesterday he got a little lax and he gave his seventeen thousand dollars back that he made yesterday, and that kind of shook him up. Well, you know, folks, when you take when you take twenty nine hundred dollars to $109,000 in five days, I mean, you're expecting a drawdown. So how he handles this over these next few days will remain to be seen, but I do want to be able to uh, report to you uh, how he's doing because someone that can do that is in the neighborhood of, uh, you know, the uh, Tommy Hugard, Stevie Cohen uh, uh, fraternity. So it's always good to, uh, you know, pay uh, close attention to that, uh, pr pretty much the same thing. I will post the, uh, this is the one, this was here. Oh, he did do something right. Let me get this up here so we'll be able to see. I asked him to uh, hold on. I think I told this. I you know I can't remember because I missed the show yesterday. Uh, this is where he took out the ninety grand. 
And uh, so that's really, you know, basically what he's uh, looking at here. So I, I, I don't know. All I'm looking at is something like this. But I do have some something that may, may or may not be important. As you know, I've been working on an AI program, artificial intelligence neural network program for a long time. I've made a couple of breakthroughs here through some friends over in the UK that are very good in our artificial intelligence. It's still too early to, uh, you know, make any assessment. But uh, this, I just want to show you if this if this works like this. The problem is, folks, it, it doesn't work like this all the time. And if it worked like this all the time, you know, no one would, no one would believe it. A and B, no one would want to tell you what you were doing. But anyway, you'll see this was the forecast this morning before the market opened. Now, remember, we, we know, A, that there's a bias in the morning uh, for the market to be bullish, especially after an up day, after being down 500 and some points in the Dow and ended up being up 80. That's a big reversal. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, seeing a rally into what they call magic time, which is up here right around this spot right here. Okay, now that that's all I was looking at right here. But what happened was I went through. <clears throat> oh, sorry, folks. Let me get up here to get this up here. I, if I'm not any better today, folks, I'm uh, probably not going to come back until I am better. But here was the actual forecast for today. Now, all that's doing is saying that the high was supposed to be coming in right around that time, and it should be drifting down uh, towards the end of the day. But if, you, if, it, if this is following the case, if it's true, watch for this uh, one-and-a-half-hour rally right here. Because that, that would be the one that you'd have a really good spot. There might be a nice pattern there. All I know is it's related to time, folks. It's taking the x-axis and, and turning it into the, uh, uh, a time for, for phenomenon, not, not just a uh, – let's try it again. It's taking the y-axis and turning it into a, a time sequence based on these vibrations that we see and this the normal probabilities – uh, of the market of what we're of we're watching here now I didn't get a chance to uh, show the DAX I want to get this up here because we're still in a downtrend in the DAX in fact we're in a downtrend in a lot of things we're just having some pretty big rallies here <clears throat> you'll see there's our downtrend in the DAX and here again if Jeff is listening you can see the beautiful one three five pattern right there great symmetry nice ratios ABCDs in between, look look at the ABCDs here, folks. If you like ABCDs, look at this. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Yes, it is the medications. <laughs> I am on some, uh, uh, what do you call it? Allergy medication, folks. And let's, let's see, there's another look. Look at this beautiful Gartley here. There's your X, A, B, C, D. Boy, this stuff is really difficult, isn't it? Shut the front door. You ought to listen to Basil's show before mine. He does more ABCDs than I do. And they work. That's why. You know, that's, he, he puts in some things that are really great. He talked today about when that Dow Jones was up there, it was hitting the 14-day exponential moving average, and so far it stopped it. I don't know. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the old London market. They're really beating old, uh, what's his name up, uh, Mr. Johnson, from all the parties that he's having. And we'll get up here to take a look at it. It's been actually doing better than uh, the German market uh, so we'll get this up here and we'll take a little break here. 877-927-6648. Billy. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, folks, uh, this is Billy Ray Valentine, a.k.a. Larry Pesavento, chatting with you from 10,000 feet above the Sonoran Desert. Still away from the Palo Verdes, but by golly, you get up here, they still have Palo Verdes up here, too. But they're just not blooming like they are down in the desert. Anyway, uh, I put a chart up here of the uh, crude oil. We were watching this for a 382 retracement yesterday. Uh, excuse me, that was on Monday. And as you notice, we came down and we hit it exactly uh, right at the 382 at 108.63. The low was 108.58. It then rallied $3,000, okay? Then it gave $2,500 of it back. Folks, when you make a $3,000 profit in something and you're only risking about five or $600, I mean, you've got to realize that, you know, <laughs> These things don't always uh, go straight up. You can't be looking for $130 oil, especially when you're watching a 15-minute or a 30-minute chart. This happens to be the 30-minute chart. So you've got to use some, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh oh we're going to have a senior moment here. Some common sense, that's what I want to say. So let's uh, remind ourselves. By the way, I did a video. <laughs> I did a video last night on all the Fibonacci numbers that were hit yesterday in the S&P. Uh, the Dow Jones exactly at the 78, the S&P, oh, Dow, excuse me, Dow Jones exactly at 50%, the E-mini exactly at 61%, the Dow, uh, the uh, NASDAQ exactly at 78%. But during that time, I was trying to think of someone, <laughs> and it was Albert Einstein, and he was on the tip of my tongue. I could see his picture and everything, but boy, it took me a while to to kick it in. But anyway, what you get, get back into this money management part, folks. You got to use some common sense on that. When I when I give orders to buy and sell, I I can give you a rough idea where things are going to go. But you know, when it comes to predicting the future, I don't do very good at that. And not many other people do either. So you've got to protect yourself with the risk. The whole thing that you focus on on these patterns is the risk. 
sure, they're going to give you a couple of nice ones once in a while. But uh, the main thing is, is when they fail, and when they fail, that's when you got to, you know, pay really close attention to. Now we got to talk about failure here in just a minute here because I, there's a really strong probability that this whole thing may fail. Let's go back to where we were just about uh, six or seven weeks ago when we first started talking about this uh, pattern that we were seeing from 1987. You remember everything lined up perfectly. The bottom came in uh, to the day, 17 days from the, uh, just like October of uh, October 2nd, 1987. You had 17 days that took you to the 19th. We did the same thing from the 5th of May. 17 days takes you to the 22nd, which was Sunday. And the market uh, bottomed uh, actually on Friday and had a pretty good rally. So far, we rallied 170 pips, I think, 170 some points. I so the question is, what are we going to do after this? Now, I don't know the answer to that, but all I do know, and I mean this without any hesitation at all, and I want to just get back to you and show you this because this is the one that, that really describes everything of what I'm watching here. Let's get this up here, and you'll be able to see it right here. This is Tesla, and folks, this is pretty reminiscent of what we're seeing in the NASDAQ. We're seeing it in Dow Jones. We're seeing it everywhere, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, all these ABCD patterns, Apple, Microsoft, all of them are completing down here. So this is either a big bottom or get out of the way because if we start breaking down hard now, uh, we're going down big time. I mean, big time. I mean, like big time, 40, 60, 60 percent or so very, very quickly. We could see 2,600 in the S&P if this thing starts breaking down. And believe me, all the factors are out there that could easily do it. I mean, you know, we've got so many things, the geopolitical environment, for heaven's sakes, the financial environment, for heaven's sakes, the health environment, for heaven's sakes. You know, hey, w folks. You don't have to look any farther than Texas to see how screwed up the world is. When somebody goes in and kills 21 people, oh my goodness! I mean that that has uh, that it doesn't make any difference whether it's guns just made it easier, I guess. But someone that's that intent on killing people is going to find another way of doing it, flying a plane into a uh, church or something like that. But you know you can't do anything. Uh, that, that's just uncontrollable. I. I, I that's my opinion. But if you look at this chart and study it, this is Tesla over a six-month period. You can see everything that we talk about here. The AB equals CD is perfect in the time down. In other words, the days from January into the February low, perfect. The number of days from the April high to the, the, the 22nd of May low, perfect. Look at the 382 rally right in the middle of the move there in February. Look at the 382 rally right in the middle of May. I mean, this thing, if you, if you, can't, if you can't teach a course on this, you know, you can't teach a course on anything. So that's why I think you got to look at these things because they give you a really good idea of what may happen. But it doesn't mean it's going to happen. The key word there is may. It may happen. And that's the, what we've got to remember. Okay? Now, let's get up to the one that... Uh, I keep on my watch list. I've never done a trade in any of this stuff here, folks. Give me a second to uh, bring it up, and we'll be able to take a look at it. I, I don't, you know, it's it's whether you're, if your personal preference is you don't want to think anything about blockchains or, uh, uh, you know, blockchains or bitcoins or tokens, just, just disregard this section of the show. It's only another two minutes, but... This is what we're looking at. There's a 382 off of the high of 67,000. That measures down here at around 12,000 in Bitcoin. Could we get there? <laughs> Trust me, boys and girls. If they can take a coin that was trading for, what, uh, $2.5 million on Wednesday and on Friday it was worth $2.05 and still dropping, uh, you can certainly uh, see that this could possibly happen. Now, uh, there's a lot of discussion whether these things are bubbles. I don't believe it's a bubble because bubbles don't last 12 years. Bubbles go up and bubbles go down and they're burst and that's it, over and done with. But this is a little different because you can see here that this has lasted a long time. And even at the, if we get down to that 12,000 level, the people that bought it for $100 and $200 per, for a coin – uh, are going to feel still like they've made a, a great, great investment. So we're not any near uh, what we think is a bottom in that. Uh, once we go below 27,000, 
Then we'll be looking down here at that level, which would be around 17,000 in Bitcoin is what our initial uh, target will be on this. And remember, this is all technical analysis, folks. It has nothing to do with, uh, what do you call it, uh, fundamentals or what's in the news or any of that stuff that's going on here. Not a chance. So let's uh, keep our eyes wide open if you want to put it uh, any other way so we'll uh, they are tradable and they are you know they're very they're very very volatile that's uh, no question uh, about that now there was one other one that I wanted to show you right here and that is this natural gas because it is on fire today natural gas hit 950 folks almost ten dollars uh, you'll notice here we were looking for a potential of a double top, but we went through those 1.618 numbers like they didn't even exist this morning. There at 9904, we went all the way up to a $955,000 move after breaking out of $9. So somebody needs natural gas, 877-927-6648. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, Larry Pesavento, and we have on the line today Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. Jeff, how are you doing today? I hope we have Jeff on the line that says we do. Let's double check uh, with TFNN. Uh, broadsword to Danny Boy. Broadsword to Danny Boy. Come in, Danny Boy. Uh oh, don't tell me we have technical difficulties. Please don't tell me that. 
Hello, operator. What's going on? The chicken is in the pot. The eagle has landed. Hello, hello. What's wrong? Uh, boy, oh boy, my voice sounds terrible. Broadsword to Danny boy. Broadsword to Danny boy. Come in, Danny boy. Larry, it's Jeff Huge. How are you? Oh, Jeff, finally. There we go. Technical miracles happen all day long. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, congratulations on calling this market so well. So do you tell the folks what we're looking at today? We'll start out with strategic risk allocation and uh, tell the folks what you're looking at here. Yeah, Larry, what um, we discovered actually on uh, May 10th was that we got a, a new signal in our strategic risk allocation model. And what this model aims to do is kind of you know, optimize your exposure to stocks versus bonds. We call it a risk on, risk off model because when it favors bonds, that would be risk off. When it favors stocks, it's risk on. What most people don't realize is that as bad as stocks have done this year, they've outperformed bonds pretty handily. And as a result, <laughs> the model has actually favored an 80-20 asset allocation favoring stocks up until uh, about May 10th. We got a signal uh, triggered that suggests that we're going to move to neutral. Now, because the model is normally a monthly close basis, uh, this won't be uh, necessarily confirmed and effective until next Tuesday at the close. Uh, but if, in fact, we stay below the trigger level, uh, which I suspect we will, then we're going to get a move to a 50-50 stock bond allocation, which is neutral by our work. Wow, that's really amazing. Now, the next one that's really interesting is you're saying there's a possibility of a major top formation in place here in these markets. Indeed. Um, you know, we've been eyeballing this head and shoulders top, which is really kind of a classic pattern top formation and uh, the breakdown below 4,300 was our initial indication that we had a problem. The break below 4,100, uh, which was really the um, um, February lows, confirmed that this pattern is operative. And, you know, I suspect that we'll remain below 4,100. It's possible we could come back up and, and really experience what I would describe as a kiss goodbye. But um, the, the pattern counts to 3,500 on the S&P 500. And the reason okay. that uh, level seems significant to me is because it, it coalesces with three other key levels of support. The first and foremost is the 50% retracement of the entire advance off the March 2020 low through the January 22 high. Uh, the second level that's interesting to us is the 200-week moving average, which comes into play at around 3,500 as well. And then we also see both the August and November weekly uh, closing highs uh, that are uh, achieved at that uh, 35 level as well. And so at 3,500, we think there is enough support there to kind of um, at, at least assuage the decline and give us some um, a, a reasonable period where we could consolidate and build a strong base and potentially rally off of that, uh, or it may just be the base before the next final leg down. Okay, now the next chart, and you've done a great job was with your wave counting for the uh, Elliott Wave, and you want to tell the folks uh, what, which count you're looking at here. It's quite descriptive uh, as I look at these charts. Exactly. So um, on the left-hand side, we have Cycle Wave 5, which began back in March of 2009. And so the 2009 low through the 2022 high in January – constitutes cycle wave five and and usually when you get five waves up you get three waves down in kind of an abc zigzag pattern traditionally and we think that in order to correct that full 13 year advance it's going to take several years possibly as many as three and to achieve kind of the optimal 61.8 percent fibonacci retracement uh, the S&P would pull all the way back down to around 2250 ultimately, which would be in line with a previous fourth wave low, which is a very typical level that we would we would generally find support uh, and, and a cycle uh, uh, corrective low. And then we would expect um, the market to be able to advance from that. Now, the other thing that we're really concerned about right now is whether that, that cycle wave high is also a super cycle wave high. 
And so yeah, we're, was... we're positing this idea that it's super cycle wave three. And if, in fact, that's the case, then this three wave uh, pullback to 2250 might only be wave A of a super cycle degree correction that could pull us back much, much further. We're going to start yeah. with kind of this this initial view of 2250 as our ultimate low. And if you move to the right-hand side of this chart, you can see the count right now is very early. We've got a one down, a two up, and we're in the middle of three down. And we don't think three down is going to stop until we get to that 3,500 level. And if, in fact, that holds, then we would have four uh, wave four sideways, and then wave five down would probably take us to uh, where we have marked uh, A in parentheses on the left-hand side. And that's about 3,200 or so. Okay, well, that sounds really good. This brings us to our first question for one of our listeners that was before the show, knowing you were going to be on. It's what is your probability that Prechter might be right that this was a super cycle high up here at uh, 39,000 in the Dow? Uh, do you have any probabilities on that, or just wait to see it unfold? Bob's a good friend. I've, I've known him for years. Uh, um, I will tell you this he actually sponsored me for the CMT exam. So, um, I've followed his work since 1997, and he's been talking about this for a long time. The problem with the whole super cycle, grand super cycle theme is that no one's ever seen one. It's all theoretical. And so, you know, we won't know for certain until we start to see more and more evidence. And that will come to light uh, once we break that, that 2250 level on the S&P. Then it becomes highly probable that it's a super cycle degree correction. And then at the next point, uh, if we got down to something like, well, uh, much, much lower, I'm not even going to throw a level out, that would start to elevate the probability that we're at grand super cycle. And so, you know, we got to take it step by oh. step. Um, I, I definitely think it's possible. Well, we've got this next chart that we're going to have to take a break, but we're going to have to spend some time on this one because this is really interesting. And I've seen these uh, – comparisons before but you've you, i don't know how you derived at this but this thing really is interesting between 2022 and 2008 you want to tell the folks how you derived this chart and looks i can see well, where we are right now but that's interesting i, I derived it by uh, asking a friend of mine to put it together because he's an expert at uh, creating these analogs uh on a time-weighted basis and so he's adjusted the proportion of the 2007 to 2009 decline to fit the proportion of the decline we've seen so far up the 2022 highs. And it seems to fit perfectly uh, with where we are in the wave pattern. And so um, we're looking at the potential for a swing high on or about next Tuesday. And that should be around S&P 4150 or give or take. Okay, great. Stay with us, Jeff. we got to pay a few bills. We'll be right back with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> sorry, for, sorry for my voice, Jeff. We're back, folks, with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, and you're going to talk to us about action speaking louder than words. You want to tell the folks what you're looking at in this chart? Absolutely. So, um, actions speak louder than words when when investors express their pessimism through um, various, you know, surveys and indicators. And, and what we're looking at in this chart is comparing sentiment versus exposure. Um, and so the University of Michigan does a consumer sentiment survey every single month. And the U of M consumer sentiment survey hit um, almost its, its lowest level since 2011, uh, back a month ago in April. And, and really everybody was kind of all over the place saying, well, look, sentiment has really bottomed. We're so low. It doesn't get much lower than this. The problem is exposures are still very, very high. Investors might be uh, expressing concern and pessimism and bearishness in the surveys, but they haven't changed their asset allocation. And so what we have is this juxtaposition between attitudes and action. And what we've seen in the past is eventually actions and attitudes converge. And if that bearish view that we're seeing expressed in all the surveys actually um, you know, metastasizes itself toward asset allocations, and we see those allocations reduced dramatically from where we are today, just below 70% net equity exposure, down to, say, 40% net equity exposure, then we will see a dramatic decline in equities. And this is one of the key reasons that I believe we're still very, very early in this bear market. Many pundits are out there trying to call the bottom week after week after week. For the last month or so, we've had just a, a slew of experts on all the financial media company uh, uh, channels telling us that it's the bottom, and it isn't, okay? We haven't seen the bottom. We continue to see evidence, all these indicators that are showing us the possibility of a low being in place, whether it's tradable or temporary, we don't know. But all of those indicators are predicated on cyclical bull and bear markets. We may very well be in a secular bear market, much the way I, I illustrated in the prior chart comparing 2022 to 2008. And if that's the case, those typical technical indicators just won't work. Yeah. Wow. I, uh, I have to – you, you – Put on a compelling story, young man. I really uh, now the next one is uh, everybody's going to like this. This is the uh, about what we see in the news all the time about geopolitical risk, and I think anybody that's got a television are, are aware of that. You want to tell the folks what you're watching? 
Sure. Larry, I have to tell you, people always ask me, what's the catalyst? Why, why will this uh, happen? Well, I don't know. Nobody knows. But this is something that's kind of slightly below most people's radar screen. And it's a simple fact that, uh, that China appears to be preparing for war, okay? Now, I'm not a big fan of Kyle Bass, but I do follow his work and take him seriously uh, because he's a smart guy. And I don't think he's wrong, okay? I don't think that his observations are, are overkill here. What we're seeing uh, is behavior on the part of China that would suggest that, that they are positioning themselves uh, for a shut-in for a long, drawn-out uh, battle. And what they did is, I believe, they got in front of this thing with Russia back on uh, February 4th, and they said, yeah, go ahead and invade the Ukraine. And then they sat back and watched, okay? And they saw what the West's response was to Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. And they said, okay, well, we're going to change our laws so that uh, we're going to you know, have our banking system insured against uh, potential U.S sanctions or Western sanctions that would preclude us from transacting through the global financial system. Uh, we're going to build up our stores of grains and oil. We're going to change our laws so that if, in fact, something extreme were to occur like a war, well, our response will be to nationalize all foreign assets and investments uh, in China. And so, as everyone knows, uh, the United States has offshored all of their manufacturing to Asia, most of which takes place in China. And assets from uh, many U.S. companies, for example, Tesla, uh, built a multi-billion dollar gigaplant factory in uh, Shanghai, right? And so uh. um, the problem here is if all of a sudden uh, the U.S. starts to step up and, and um, you know, defend Taiwan, if China were to make a move, well, then China would nationalize those assets, which would dramatically impair U.S. companies' balance sheets, okay? Um, we've seen this sort of action uh, really um, bubbling up from underneath, okay? We've seen a lot of things uh, occurring uh, in recent months that, you know, just aren't making the mainstream headlines. For example, China launched a satellite, okay? And they put a satellite in space that has a big robotic arm. And they use that robotic arm to grab one of their other satellites and jettison it into outer space so that it's completely unusable, right? And they did that to demonstrate to the United States that they could destroy our command and control response by simply using that, that you know, robotic arm to throw our satellites out of orbit into outer space and, and basically render our command and control systems uh, unusable. And so um, they're, they're definitely telling us that they are not to be messed with. And I think if you take a look at, you know, the second slide uh, where, you know, Xi and Putin got together back on, on uh, February 4th and shook hands, I think it's possible that the two are collaborating in kind of this, you know, what uh, Kyle Bass calls is this yeah. despotic imperialism, right? The axis of despotic yeah. imperialism. But, you know, there's no question that China's built up wow. their grain hordes. Uh, they own about 70% of the world's corn, 60% of the world's rice, 50% yeah. of the world's wheat. They yeah. have that in stores. That will last them over two and a half years for their entire yeah. 1.5 billion population. They're also looking to build up their strategic petroleum reserves by buying all of um, the spare capacity coming out of Russia because the West has basically uh, put an embargo on Russian oil, but Russia is still producing it. And so someone, it's got to go somewhere, and China is absorbing it all, building up their own strategic petroleum reserves. Meanwhile, the U.S. is ex expending our strategic petroleum reserves trying to keep the price of oil low. Okay. Jeff, have you heard anything about the fact that uh, uh, Putin wants to take over Odessa because of the huge grain supplies for wheat that are there? Someone said it had like a two-year supply of world wheat uh, in Odessa. I don't know if it's true or not, but one of my grain, tra grain trading friends sent me that information, but I had not heard anything like that. I know they do a lot of wheat over there, but uh, that's another thing that, you know, if he starts bombing those grain reserves, boy, that's going to cause a... Uh, famine in that area of the world, for sure. There's no doubt it's possible. I mean, I think there's no question that Putin is an evil man. I don't necessarily believe that the Chinese are evil, but I do believe that they've got some of uh, their very own independent nationalist objectives, and one of which is to bring 
Taiwan back in under the Chinese umbrella, uh, much the way they did with Hong Kong a couple of years ago. And Hong Kong went, you know, pretty much willingly. There were demonstrations in the street, but there was not a military action. It was more of a police action. I think Taiwan could be more uh-huh. of a military action because there's a different wow. sovereign government there that wants to remain sovereign. Hey, so with, yeah. um, if China gets control hey, of Taiwan, they will control the, the world semiconductor okay, chip supply. We'll be right back with Jeff and Jonathan. Stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Okay, we're back, folks. We're chatting with Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights. Jeff, you want to tell the folks how they can uh, get more information from you? Absolutely. So the best place to find me is on my website, jwhinvestment.com. You can get my free newsletter there. You can see all the other uh, services that we provide our members. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, at Alpha underscore Insights. And, uh, you know, you can get access to all those things there as well. So uh, we'd love for you to uh, become a member of our newsletter. There's lots of extra um, perks that come with it, including our top trade idea every single week we publish on Wednesday. In fact, we're putting one together that we're going to send out to members in about an hour. And I think it's going to be one of our better ideas based on what we're seeing in the market right now. 
Well, that's great. Well, I've posted it in the room, folks. You can read him at Alpha Insights on Twitter and also Jeff W. Huge CMT on LinkedIn and www.jwhinvestments.com. Great stuff, my friend. And we'll have you on again soon, okay? Thank you, Larry. Have a great one. Okay, thank you so much, folks. Jeff, huge Alpha Insights. Tomorrow, our guest will be a new guest that we haven't had on for quite some time. Mr. Shane Smolian, thewolftrader.com, will be on. And he'll be talking to more about his bearish information of what's going on in the market. And I'll leave you with this today. Uh oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. I'll get it in just a second. Uh, hopefully, we'll be ready to see this last one. This is so far what we've been watching today. Watch for this rally that's going to be coming in here in the next two hours and see what it does. But uh, it says that we could be trending. This is the end of this rally around that time. And then we might be drifting down. Remember, this only has about a 60% probability of being correct. Uh, today is 60%, uh, but we'll see what happens uh, by the time we come up. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. And we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. And uh, make sure you do something nice for your neighbors each day, folks, because they need help. There's a lot of folks out there that are having a lot of trouble. So we'll see you all tomorrow with Shane Spolian as our guest. Mm -hmm.